Thank you for having me here again. <laughs> Great to always share with you. Always a pleasure. So, Lanicia wears so many hats, but she's here this evening in the capacity of the JCDC Miss Manchester Festival Queen for 2009. Can you believe it? Almost 14 so, years. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can hardly believe time flies. <laughs> yes. And you have been having a lot of fun while the time has been going by. Right. So, well, yeah, yes. this, the, the truth is, it's because of this competition why I do what I do right now. So, you know, I'm awesome. very grateful for it. It really created a platform for me, for my career, and, you know, helped me to discover my purpose also. In right. Interesting. And um, your project is about helping others to discover their purpose. Yes. through different avenues right <laughs> so let me say also the founder and executive director for young women and men of purpose why wop and why mop for short and you can check her out across social media platforms some awesome work she has been doing but let's take it from the start 2009 what was your vision at the time <laughs> well, at the, so um, as as was mentioned before, part of the the requirement for entering the competition is that you needed to be involved in your community, and so I was involved in my community. I mean, through Rotaract and you know through my church. Um, but when I saw that oh, I needed to have my own community service project. Um, at the time, I was an instructor with Heart Trust MPA um, in Junction, and um, I was already mentoring the young ladies in my class. And so when I thought about a project, I'm like, hmm, maybe I could do like a big sister program where I could make official the mentorship and support that I was giving to the female students in the class. But then um, I spoke with someone and it was, you know, big sister was too cliche, so I had to really <laughs> sit down. And to think about it, and when I thought about what I was doing and what I wanted to do, um, the idea came that, you know, it's really helping these young women to become young women of purpose. And basically, that's how the, the name came about, Young Women of Purpose. And then I liked the acronym that it formed, YWAP. And um, basically, the idea was to really help young women who were facing different challenges to get past those challenges by just talking with someone who could listen to them and also to provide guidance, especially in the area of their career. One of the things that stood out to me while being an instructor with HEART um, was that quite a number of these young women who were in my class at the time, they experienced several challenges. Some of them um, encountered teenage pregnancy and so fell out of high school. And you know, they were at HEART trying, to, for some of them, not all, but for some, trying to get a second chance, you know, at, or for their education. And so basically I wanted to help them. Many of them did not have parents that they could speak to, to guide them and to help them to choose or to achieve their career goals. And in the school system, unfortunately, there aren't enough career advisors or career counselors who can spend that one-on-one -on -one time with students to really guide them and help them to achieve their career goals. So it was all of that that came to me, and I decided that that is the angle that I wanted to take my project in terms of really providing that guidance and support to young women um, to help them to achieve their career goals in spite of the challenges that they have. So that's how it came about. I mean, we would have we have evolved now, so we are young women and men, and I'm, I can tell you about that a little later. <laughs> in Indeed, and it is interesting that you mentioned the um, the limited resources as it relates to guidance with career planning. I uh, was on a forum with our youth leaders in the parish of Clarendon since the week, and that was one of the areas that um, actually came up. A lot of our young people have no idea why they're here, mm -hmm. and not just young people, but a lot of us are not so sure why we are here. And so it creates this kind of confusion and we're not so sure uh, if we make, it's worth being here. So um, that kind of guidance and support is really important. Yes. And as we've shared, it's almost 14 years and quite naturally, 
there has been a lot of transitioning over the years. Yes. So take us along that in, as to how you decided and why you decided to continue with the project and what were some of the changes that you made. Right. So um, for me, when I launched my project, I had a full-time job. <laughs> and so we started out with our, what is now called our flagship mentoring program. That's how we really started. And we were having mentoring sessions with the young women in the program twice per month, every second Tuesday and every last Saturday. And part of the reason it was the same session that was repeated because we found that quite a number of our mentees as well as um, the volunteers, and I'll touch on that, how we got volunteers in a minute, um, were Seventh-day Adventists too. And so we didn't want them to miss out. For those who were Adventists and couldn't come on the Saturdays, we didn't want them to miss out until we had it in the Tuesday, the second Tuesday evening. But then also for those who could not make it in the evenings, because this is now being held after school, after work, we wanted to have that space for them to come on, on Saturdays. And basically, um, that's how we started out with the two sessions every month. And we also paired the mentees with um, mentors. And the goal of it was, as I said, to really help them to have sessions to help them to discover who they are and also to help them to figure out the career path that they wanted to pursue and to get them there. And so um, that's how we started out. Um, I didn't do it alone. <laughs> so even though I was a festival queen, I had support from even my fellow contestants. So I remember um, one of the, the second runner of um, Miss Ruth Christian, she was uh, an instru she played a very instrumental role in my project. She saw what I was about. I remember we met one day and I was telling her, you know, my plans for my project and she volunteered to be a part of it. Not only that, one of my trainers, I, I, I won't ever forget, my public speaking um, trainer, Miss Noreen Daly, she also saw the, the brochure and the information about the project, and then she wanted to be a part of it, and she also invited other persons to be a part of it. And so really and truly, I had that support from the early days of volunteers who helped to make the project successful. And so by the time one year had passed, based on the impact that the project had created among the, the mentees or the beneficiaries, and also just the support from persons who volunteered to be a part of the project, um, I decided that, you know, this is something that I want to continue. In, in fact, I had that confirmation for myself that, you know, this is my purpose. When I heard the feedback from just mentees, especially my very first mentee, um, who wrote me a letter, you know, sharing how impactful um, just being her mentor has been for her life. I mean, it brought me to tears and it really confirmed that maybe this is something that I'm called to do. And that was the decision I made to continue this project. Um, males were also coming to us at the time to say, what about us? You know, we were focused on females, but they wanted something for males. And so the decision was made that not only are we going to continue Young Women of Purpose, but we're going to extend it to include male. And so the name changed from Young Women of Purpose to Young Women and Men of Purpose. And, um, and we decided to become a registered nonprofit organization in Jamaica so that we could carry on the work that had started as my Festival Queen project. And, um, and then, uh, you know, get support from corporate Jamaica, corporate foundations, and also seed grant funding to carry out the work that we were doing. So basically that is how it really evolved. Just a quick point though, so one of the reasons why the project evolved and people were able to gravitate and come on board, I mentioned person saw the brochure. So one of my very dear friends, I'm Charlene Mohan, when the idea came and I spoke to her about it, um, she created a logo for the project, and um, and she also created the brochure. I had written a plan for the project, by the way, and she created the brochure. And so I was able to give this to people and to persons who were interested in, in learning more about it. And that is how persons actually were recruited to become volunteers, and they were able to share the message with other persons. That's the beauty about walking in purpose. 
it galvanizes support from all different angles because yeah. uh, it's interesting how others are able to see the vision without you even having to speak it. It, it is just it just becomes obvious and um, a number of the queens who have been in this space have shared about the power of that sisterhood and the bond that um, are established among those even those ladies remember all vying for the crown there's only one crown but even after the competition there's this support that goes into helping the reigning queen because even when the reigning queen is not able to carry out some of the functions, the others will step up and be a part of it. So there's room for all to shine. All right, some awesome comments coming in here. Beautiful, really, imp really impactful and changing lives. Not just the lives of the queens, but the lives of so many people around them. All right, so let's transition into the nonprofit organization because i'm sure a number of our past queens didn't even think along that line as to how they can um make their project sustainable so they can continue to create impact so share with us now um what was just a highlight of the process in terms of getting to that stage some of the things to consider and then we can transition into the other area in terms of the social enterprise aspect. Right. Okay. okay. Right. So, I mean, having done, I was an entrepreneurship instructor, by the way. So I was familiar, um, you know, basic information or theoretically with the registration process in Jamaica. And, um, and I was also an entrepreneur myself. So I would have done that. And so I would have learned about um, just registering a nonprofit organization and also um, the benefits of registering in terms of being able to seek grant funding for projects or programs and um, to seek support from corporate Jamaica and, and basically to be involved in you know workshops or programs that can provide um, capacity building if you want to go into that area. So that was the thought behind becoming registered because no longer did I see this as my community service, just my community service project, I now saw it as an organization that was creating impact. And so in order to continue that impact, structure has to be in place. Um, so the registration was done um, back then. It was with the company's office of Jamaica as a nonprofit organization and um, started to document everything too, in terms of just the structure, a system in terms of the volunteers' role responsibility. So this is very, very important if you want to create um, a, a project or an organization that will become sustainable. You must have these systems or, or structures in place. And the truth is, too, people are attracted to structure. So um, I didn't go out there and literally recruit anybody. People always came up because they saw what we were doing or they saw a flyer, they saw a brochure about the work that we were doing. Um, after being registered in 2012, we, because of the network that I was involved with, we got an email inviting us to apply for grant funding from UN Habitat. And um, there was a project that I had created or written in the past for another program that I was a part of. And um, I decided to work with one of my volunteers to seek the project and it became the Youth Entrepreneurship Project. And we submitted it. Um, we've never had grant funding, you know, and we submitted it to the UN Habitat. And lo and behold, we were successful. And um, we received a grant of almost 20,000 US dollars, which would have been, you know, a big deal for us <laughs> at the time and still is um, as a nonprofit organization to execute or to implement the Youth Entrepreneurship Program. And I think to what that did for us, it confirmed our relevance in terms of the work that we were doing. And it also gave us that push to say, you know, if we can actually impact lives in this means, especially young people, especially in central Jamaica, in Manchester, um, where we were based, then it means that, you know, we can continue on this path. And not only over the years, what has also happened is that because of the work that we have done, because of the support that we have received, just by being formal 
Um, I have no, I've now gotten to a point where no longer am I just focused on my organization, but I want to help other people to do what I have done. I want to share my experience. You know, I want to provide guidance to others, especially youth-led organizations, because I think that there is so much that young people can do to really impact life in Jamaica. But most times, the projects or the organizations, they're not sustainable because they would not know how to become sustainable. They don't know that, you know, if you simply make a plan, have things written down, then it makes such a huge difference in terms of your sustainability. And, um, and so to wrap up um, in terms of this question, that first funding that we had, because the project was executed so well, it was managed by the project coordinator, um, Shamoy Hajari Oval. And um, in fact, I was not even in the country when the project was being executed. <laughs> and um, at the time, our president was um, Ruth Christian. But the project was executed so well and because of that, we were able to, since then, gain or attract additional funding from numerous agencies and organizations every year since 2012 because of the work that we've done. And we've also been able to develop um, our entrepreneurship program, which has now become a staple in the organization, and also execute other capacity building programs and outreach activities just because we took the step to become formalized, to create the structure, to put them in place, to have our meetings. And one of the things I laugh about now is that before COVID, our team meetings were being held online on Zoom. And so we were accustomed to remote working even before COVID in the organization. And these are the things that had contributed or have contributed to our sustainability as a nonprofit organization, especially a youth-led one here in Jamaica. Amazing. And Sandra is congratulating YWAP. No, YMOP. And um, <laughs> just to share with our viewers that the project started in Manchester, but you're no longer just serving Manchester. You are now serving the island of Jamaica. Yes. We Especially are. where the entrepreneurship yes. component so, is concerned. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so our entrepreneurship program, even our mentoring program, it is done virtually now since COVID. And because of that, we are reaching um, young people right across Jamaica. We also offer scholarships yearly. They're going to be launched next week. So look out for that if you're online. But um, even our scholarship program, our scholars are from all over Jamaica also, you know, so... Um, we are we're very grateful i am very grateful that you know this small project has been sustained um you know um because of god's grace we've been able to really expand the right persons have become a part of the team in terms of volunteer now we have staff right um because of partnerships with different organizations and um and even just the funders who especially our first funder who took that chance with us to give us with no experience, you know, that funding to actually execute our program. And because of our track record and reputation and a success and the impact that we've created, you know, we have been able to get to this point. Also another critical um, element of our success is our media partners. Um, my personal mantra is that I do what I do because of the impact that I want to create, not necessarily, not to, to seek attention or to put myself out there, but it is also very important as an organization, if you want to grow, if you want to attract the funding, that funders, they want to know that you are highlighting, you know, the support that they have given to you. And so it's very important to partner with the media. media. And we have been blessed um, to have this, had the support of the media uh, over the years for every single project that we have done in the country. And that has um, added to just building our reputation as an organization and highlighting some of the work that we've done and also highlighting the beneficiaries. Quite a number of them have also benefited just from um, having their stories shared publicly. And so all of those elements have come together to um, contribute to the reason why we're still here as a sustainable nonprofit 
um, operating across Jamaica. Amazing. All right. And this is like a full-time job <laughs> based on all that you've been sharing. And I'm sure a number of my young people are saying, all right, Lanicia, we've heard all of that. And it's important to create impact and all of that. But the bills still need to be paid. So how yeah. do we pay the bills <laughs> by doing all of this while we create that kind of impact? Right. So the truth is, this is something that this is an area, especially as it relates to the organization that I'm still learning about and I'm still working on. Because many people probably would not believe, but the organization has been predominantly a volunteer based organization. So even when I started, I had a job, I had a business, right? So I was always doing something else. And it wasn't until years after, in fact, a few years ago, that I recognized and realized, but no, um, if I'm doing this and this is what I love, this is what I'm passionate about, I could do this full time. Right. After being exposed to different workshops and training and conferences in Jamaica and even overseas, I realized that there were many nonprofit organizations that people are employed. They're getting decent salaries, right, to work it full time. And so my my mindset shifted. And since I recognize that, that is an area that I've actually been working on or we've been working on as a team because I do have, I mean, the executive body and team members who, who help to, you know, write programs, identify funding and so forth. And so, as I said, it's a, it's a work in progress. One of the things that we've been able to do is to partner with an organization that paid um, four of my staff members, right? And so that's how we actually got to employ some persons who, you know, probably would have been volunteering in the organization. We still have volunteers though, and volunteers do get a stipend where necessary from projects, right? But project funding is, you know, winsome, you would know. <laughs> it's a different type of funding, but we try to remunerate persons as best as possible once it permits. Um, currently, we are now looking for funding to support the operation of the organization so that we can even become more sustainable or sustainable financially um, not, not that we won't look for grant funding, but we want to be able to be able to execute our programs on our own. And so we have shifted just the way we work. Um, no longer are we just focused on offering programs or projects freely to beneficiaries, but we will always offer programs and projects to those who may not be able to afford it. But we are also offering consultations and programs and support to persons who are able to pay for it or to pay for it for particular groups of persons so that while we're creating impact, my team can be fed, I can be fed, and we can be taken care of. Um, on a more personal note in terms of how I've been able to manage, so because of the experiences that I've had just um, creating and sustaining or leading this organization, um, so many doors of opportunities have opened for me locally and internationally. Um, I always share with young people that, you know, I had a dream when I was young of traveling the world and I thought I was going to do that through working in the hospitality industry because that's what my first degree was in. But um, that didn't happen. But I've traveled to over 16 countries, free of cost for the most part, because of the work of this organization. So I've been able to participate in accelerator and incubator programs internationally, where I've been able to learn best practices from persons who are facing impact, but still making a profit to take care of themselves. And so I am using those skills, the knowledge that I've developed to really implement in this organization. I also offer consultancy. So I later or now set up a, an official consultancy firm where I now help other persons um, to set up their own nonprofit, um, to write project proposals, to create their strategic plan for their organization. And so that also provides income so that um, you know, we can take care of ourselves. So um, that is where we are at. Recently too, we started a social enterprise within the organization, which is an online career development platform and um, we sell the services there. So we offer workshops to schools and we also offer a subscription model. And so when we collect funds from those activities, 
the profits actually go into the nonprofit so that we can sustain ourselves. So that generally is the funding model that we have been using. All right. We have a few minutes left, but we want to quickly, for those who are wondering, what is a social enterprise? Mm -hmm. Okay, quick, so quick definition. <laughs> okay. All right. So a social enterprise, it is a business first and foremost that has been created to create impact. So it has a social mission, meaning it must be creating some sort of impact within the community for other persons. As I mentioned, it is a business, so it generates revenue and it makes profit. However, when you generate profit, the profits do not go into the pockets of the leaders of the organization. But, and, and this doesn't mean that you don't get paid. Remember the pay, your, your salary is taken out before the profit. So what is left after all your expenses, salaries are taken out, that profit goes back into the community that the organization operates in or into the organization so that more impact can be created. So basically a social enterprise, it, it looks into you know supporting people, it supports the planet, but it also makes profit. And that's um, part of the sustainability model because yes. a lot, right, a lot of great projects are stalled because of the inability to sustain what's um, happening. Great projects, impact, but so many things that are missing. So we have to consider all the elements. I'm, I'm going to make a, a passionate plea to those who are viewing Please to share this. There are so many things that um, Lanicia shared that our young people, and not just young people, the young at heart can learn so much from in terms of the platform for the Festival Queen, in terms of how you encourage others, our organization and resource here where they can reach out to get support in these different areas. Look out for this, the scholarship opportunities that are coming up and take advantage of them. So go ahead and connect with YWAP, YMOP on the different social media platforms so you don't miss the share and just circulate in your communities. Because this is why we do what we do, right? <laughs> we show up and there's it's really powerful how we can, we're can we able to get buy-in because when others are able to see the mission, the vision and the impact that you can create, they want to be a part of the awesome mission that is bigger than the individuals. And that's how we really ought to see it. All right, so Lanicia, in the next two minutes, share with our young people, especially those who are looking to um, be a part of the Festival Queen competition, or maybe past queens who uh, have those projects that they just need to dust off and um, revisit and go again share share some words of inspiration in addition to what you have already shared with them okay all right so if you are a young lady who is looking to enter in this competition um i'd encourage you to enter uh take advantage of the platform that is provided to really help you to create an impact in your community if you're thinking about a project, and even if you're not thinking about entering the competition, but you want to create impact in your community, in the country, you know, in the world, and you're thinking about a project idea, first thing that I would encourage you to do is to make a note of that idea, write it down. It doesn't have to be a perfect business plan, but you can get started by writing it down. And think about it, what is it that you want to do? You can look around you to see the problem, identify a real problem, what problems exist in your community, in your surrounding? What are people always complaining about that they're not getting? Do you have the skills and expertise to solve that? Can you partner with others to do so? And um, and then create a solution based on that. Once you've done that, as I said, just make notes, make notes. If it is that you've written everything down and you can't put it together in a proper plan, get somebody to help you. My friend helped me with the logo and the brochure. Um, so get somebody to help you. And once you have everything documented, then get started. Partner with persons. Ask a school, maybe your old school, can you use their classroom to host the session if it is that you're going to have sessions with persons. If you're doing it online, then get started. The key thing is that if you don't get started, 
then you will not start creating the impact that you, you've thought about. So get started. And once you get started, get support. There are a lot of people out there who want to help others. They don't necessarily want to recreate the wheel. So get support, start with your friends and families and, um, and, and just execute and carry out the work that you're doing. Focus on the impact. So do not be caught up too much in you know, the publicity and the social media. This is important, but it comes after. Create real impact and you will be surprised to see how even other people will promote the work that you are doing and you don't have to do it yourself. And this is how you're going to change lives and change persons within your community. And then um, partner with persons. Again, you cannot do it alone. Um, so from the get-go, think about the sustainability. How are you going to finance this project? How are you going to keep the program going? Can you offer a part of it for free, but then sell something else to those who are willing to pay so that you can balance and, and generate revenue to sustain the program, but also to sustain yourself if you're looking to do what you're doing full time. Ensure that you get registered because it is in the registration that you're opening up doors for yourself to access funding both locally and international. Most international agencies want to know that you are registered um, in your country as a charity. So ensure that you follow that process and get yourself registered as a nonprofit organization in Jamaica. And ensure that you're keeping proper records. Document what you do, document your programs and your projects, and also document in terms of your spending because this is going to be important um, to your funders and also for you to continuously um, attract or get funding to support the work that you are doing. And um, share what you're doing, share the stories of the beneficiaries, share the impact that has been created. You can do so freely on social media, or you can also create a website for your organization. And remember to always say thank you to the person who supported you, whether they are funders, whether they are your volunteers or team members always show gratitude because this will help in terms of just your sustainability and and just providing that opportunity for you to grow and even create more impact. They will help you if they realize that you're passionate about what you're doing, you're genuine, you're authentic, care more about the impact and uh, and you show gratitude. So or this is what I would say <laughs> to those who want to go into this area of work amazing i i'm wondering if you're all getting it because you just got a, a little master class in business <laughs> oh lenicia thank you so much yes melissa is saying that she's proud of you and the impact you have made all right we are all proud of you and i'm sure those who are connecting and even if they didn't know you before they're feeling really proud especially as Jamaicans, to know that we have a Jamaican who is making waves, um, not for just for the feel and the likes, but to make meaningful impact, changing lives one day at a time. Lanicia, thank you so much. Always a pleasure um, sharing space with you, whether virtual or in person. And I'm sure we'll be doing more of this as we continue. All right. Thank you. <laughs>